Father, uh, you've assembled a beautiful collection of prayers in your book on deliverance prayers for the laity, very popular mm -hmm. in Catholic circles. Uh, what is the best way to pray for people, our, our siblings, uh, adult children who have left the faith, maybe joined a Protestant church? And additionally with that, um, what is it that keeps people from returning to the church that have fallen away? Is our actual demons involved in that process? Um, yeah, actually, I think they are, but not, I, I don't think demons are under every rock. Sometimes people are just wed to their sin. They just like sin and they don't want to come into the church because they have to change. But I tell people there's a positive and a negative to people's conversion. And this is even true, like even if they're on their deathbed and they don't want to see a priest, like as in, in you see with parents and children dealing with that with their parents, etc., cetera, um, or that the kids have left the faith and they don't want to come back or what have you. I tell them there's a positive and a negative. The positive side is they actually have to have grace they actually actually have to have grace in order to convert because the conversion is a, a conversion to a supernatural deposit of faith and a supernatural life and so they have to have grace in order to do that so you have to keep praying for that on the other hand demons because they have access to our emotions and our imagination that can actually influence people's um reactions to the grace so even if god gives them grace they can inspire fear like oh well you know if you if you become catholic well then you know you, you're going to lose your friends or you're going to have to stop this particular behavior in your life or you're, you're not going to be able to get this or that or what have you so they can use our emotions against us and all, also our perceptions and so i tell people saying a binding prayer or just saying prayers to keep demons out of these people's lives to block them so in the binding prayer i just tell people bind any demon that is keeping them from converting and do it on a regular basis so you can use that particular um, prayer or other prayers consecrating them to our lady on a consistent basis plus as well as saying the positive stuff and that's what i've seen as the most effective um, way to convert in fact I have a relative whose husband was a very, he was a man of natural virtue. Everybody in the family really liked this guy, but he was a Protestant. And he just, it, it, he, it, it seemed like he was stubborn. But in the end, so I, at, at one point I just said to my sister, here, say this binding prayer against any demon that's keeping him from coming into the church. She started saying it within 10 months he was in the church even oh, though she'd been wow. praying for 20 years. Praise so God. the point being is, is this this gives you an indicator that if we have if we can get the demons out of life, people will generally speak and follow, hopefully, not absolutely, but they'll follow the way of grace. And so that's why we do both. Mm. Josh, as a convert, what is your take on that? Oh, I wouldn't presume to speak on uh, demonology when Father River Kurt's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't I don't have additional opinions. Uh, but Father, is that prayer? And because I actually have some family members who are going through some tough things right now. Uh, is that is that binding prayer in uh, in the book? I, I think I have that book. Yeah, prayer. it's deliverance prayers for the laity. Yeah, it's yeah. in that okay. book. Okay, great. Yeah. And at, on the bottom of his footnote, if this doesn't work, bop him on the head with a bat. <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> Plan B. Plan B. <laughs> Steve, do you have Protestants in your life who would take umbrage with the idea that there are, are demons keeping them in, in their faith of choice? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, what is it? 98% of the guys I used to talk to don't uh, don't talk to me anymore. I mean, I, I'm in the South and we're surrounded by Protties. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, man. There I, is yeah, an example on Paul. We don't have enough time to go through all that, that stuff. I mean, my brother's post. Uh, them texting me up, what's wrong with your brother? He's so arrogant about it, saying the church is the uh, one true church and all that. I go, yeah. So, my, I remember that was my first apologetic was uh, telling the guys, you're a SEC, you know, South Carolina game talk then, right? And is the SEC the best uh, football team, uh, 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 college football uh, conference in the in the union? He goes, yeah, yeah. Is that arrogant or truth? And I, eight years later, I still don't have that uh, response. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, you know, for everything from morals to whatever you change, you start living that way. Uh, you figure out who, uh, who your friends were real quick. Yeah. So yeah, most of those got most of my friends I grew up with. Yeah. We barely talk anymore. I got one left. And he's a, uh, he's a Lutheran and uh, I don't know why he still talks to me. Cause I will bash him off the top of the head with things like you know, I went to his baptism, his kid's baptism and the, the whatever the cleric was is, uh, what's your name? What's the name? Bryce. Oh, that's a good Lutheran name. I go, uh, time out. Uh, outside of Martin and Luther, what's a good Lutheran name? And uh, 
you know, things like that. And just tell them, you know, <laughs> you guys just have this. Look at what beauty we have over here. And it's, I don't know what's holding them back. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, uh, countless years of being in that world, being surrounded by other friends, seeing what happened with me, with our friends, just being basically, you know, pushed aside and uh, ostracized in a sense. But uh, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, I, they're a ton around me. Uh, I think they would, if I told them they had a demon in them, they would, uh, I don't know what I don't know what the reaction would be from them, but trust me, I, I do the same thing with the with Father recommend, and uh, as Father Mateo says, there's a price for the price needs to be paid. So I was gonna do penance yeah. for him. Josh, you were going to mention something uh, by Doctor Paul Thigpen oh, in the book. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought Steve was was done. Um, oh, you're good. No, you're good. Don't worry about it. No, Paul Thigpen, I believe, wrote. A, I'm forgetting the name of the book at the moment, but he has an example of an exorcist, I think it was in Poland, they were meeting with a Calvinist who was seemingly possessed. And and I'm, I'm honestly forgetting the details, but somehow the demon responded well to a copy of Calvin's Institutes. Uh, and, and that was an indication to the exorcist that uh, there was possession. So, wow, I'm forgetting the details, but yeah, I was, yeah. I mean, that that's what's so, I mean, I definitely, Honestly, I don't recommend telling Protestants they have a demon in them because I don't I don't know that. Um, and I and I right. unless I get, an, uh, you know, a, an indication otherwise, I'll, I'll assume goodwill. Um, but but, um, you know, I think uh, many Protestants, uh, if you approach them with an acknowledgement of their genuine concerns, which are to be faithful to Scripture and whatnot, um, that's a great way to start asking some basic questions about, well, where does scripture come from? And, and Jesus said the Holy spirit would be with the apostles till he came back. And so, you know, how does that work? And, and the, the Holy spirit would guide the church into all truth. How does that work? And so I, that would be the approach that I would recommend. 